can start. Yeah. Hello, Jorgen. Hi. Um, Are you filming? Yeah. Very good. <laughs> if it's okay for you. Yes, yes. yes. Um, many thanks for giving me this interview, first of all. Um, my first question is, how do you feel to play at the Elfes since nine years ago to playing black jazz? I, I remember this festival from last time. It was a really cool festival and yeah. we played a great show last time in 2015. So I wanted to come back and uh, do an even better show, you know? Yeah. And uh, so I've been looking forward to this show for half a year. And um, and it turned out really good. I'm super happy with uh, our concert last night. Mm. So I'm just uh, happy. Yeah. Have you heard uh, any feedbacks about the show of yesterday? Yeah, I've heard great feedback from the audience, from the uh, from the uh, sound guy and the light guy, and they like people came to them and said that it sounded good and looked good. And now you know you can you see all the stories on Instagram and stuff. Yeah. So I've seen it from the from the outside and it looks amazing and it sounds cool so um, sometimes you don't get that feeling when you're on the stage because the sound in your ears are yeah. doesn't sound very inspiring and and you don't see how it looks. So I was uh, pleasantly surprised when I saw clips from outside. Yeah. yeah, and many people uh, said on Instagram about the light work. Yeah. Could you speak about the light work of yeah. yesterday? That it was, was really awesome. Good. So, Greg, if you see this, you did an amazing job. Um, your last album is a live album for the anniversary of Black Jazz. Yeah. Um, could you speak about this live album? Yes, it was. Um, it was a live stream, uh, video stream during the pandemic when we couldn't play shows anywhere. So we found a place in Norway, a special old factory that was active during the Second World War. And, and they created heavy water there, uh, among other things. And Hitler and the Nazi uh, army wanted to capture that factory to, so they can create, could create uh, heavy water to make an atom bomb. Um, so that was... They wanted to do that, they occupied Norway and they went there and they actually took the factory and then a group of Norwegian uh, resistance uh, warriors, uh, heroes now, they went there and had a sabotage mission and bombed the part of the factory so it couldn't work, <coughs> which, which uh, men hindered the Nazis from getting the atom bomb. So that's like the... That's the historic backdrop of the factory, and it looks Amazing. really cool. Big room, huge, um, huge machines, turbines there. So it was a cool place to play. It looked good, and we and we did a show. And we um, compared to a lot of other people at that time, a lot of other bands, especially bigger bands, they recorded the live stream first, and then mixed it, and then streamed it. Kind of not live, but they pretended it was live two days after. But we wanted to get the feeling of the, the adrenaline you get from knowing that things can go wrong. So we did it live, um, and I I mixed it, I mastered it, and I got uh, our new drummer. He edited it, um, and I think the live energy comes across, even though there's no audience. Uh, so that's the. Black Jazz Live at the Heavy Water Plant, which is out on uh, streaming platforms and a CD that is only available from our merch store. And I'll sign it. It's like, I think we made 333 of the CDs. And uh, you can see the whole show on YouTube. Also. Um, in this album, there is a featuring with Isan. Yeah. Um, could you speak about this featuring? Yeah. <laughs> we released the Black Jazz Studio album in 2010. And. Um, the same day that that album came out, Ishan's album called After also came out in Europe, same day. And I played saxophone on that album on a lot of the songs. And both are, I would say, kind of black jazz type music. Our music was more industrial, he's more organic. Um, so I've been working with him in that period of time. And then when Black Jazz came out, I thought maybe he could do uh, a version of he, him singing the song The Madness and the Damage Done. So he did that 
back in 2010. But I never got a chance to release it. That was a time when we didn't really release singles and I didn't have other songs to make a new version of the full album. So it never happened until 2020. We were on a uh, metal cruise at 70,000 tons of metal in the Caribbean. And I thought maybe we should just get that song out as a, as a digital single. So I had him redo some of the vocals, add some more vocals at the end or whatever. And we made that song and that came out. And then when we were doing this live stream, he lives kind of close by. You know, he lives in that area. So I asked him if he wanted to do that song as an encore and as the last number. So that's the story and it sounded really cool. So that ended up being, you know, the the kind of the lead single for the live album. And um, about him today, you are playing with Emperor. Yes. Um, could you tell us um, your story uh, being on an Emperor member? Yeah, it started with the same thing that I worked with Ishan on the album after, and then I did um, three or four other albums with him during the next kind of five, ten years. Um, and he called me and said, uh, our previous keyboardist is uh, not able to do do it anymore. So do you know uh, do you know a guy who could do the keyboards? And I said I don't know. I could do it maybe. Uh, and I I'm not like a p piano player, but I'm I'm a musician. So I, I'm I, I produce music. I write music, and I so I could play. I thought I could I could do it. You know. Um, so I did it. So that's that's where it started, 2018, and I'm still doing it. Are you going to uh, release a new studio album with Shining? Yeah, but we have since the pandemic. I started just releasing uh, single songs yeah. because I, you know, we couldn't. Nobody knew when we were when we could tour again, and uh, the economic situation of everything was uncertain. So I didn't want to tie up. A lot of time, a lot of money into an album project, and then I had a lot of friends who just made an album and ended up not releasing it because you couldn't tour. So it's kind of weird to release an album without touring afterwards. So I didn't want to be in that situation. So I decided just to make songs, and when they're done, I just put them out. And it also creatively is much more fun because I can. I can make a song if I like it, I can do another one that's similar. If I don't like it, I can change it. Um, so I just kept that going. And now I think we released seven, eight singles since then. So now I'm kind of thinking I'm, I'm going to make more songs and then maybe choose the best 10 of them that fits together and make that into an album. Uh, so we're kind of halfway. I don't know which one is going to join, be part of the album or not, but working on it but there's a lot of other stuff to do you know touring and that live album and I just released an EP and I uh, so um, when I have time you know. yeah so uh, my next question uh, is uh, how do you manage your time yeah it's uh, I like working so that's a good thing uh, but I have stuff to do uh, and I got two kids and so uh, I wish I had more time, <laughs> but I try to do the best with what I have, and I try to be efficient. And then, but you know, I'm getting by, and uh, I don't have to be quick. I just want to be quick, but if I, I do what I want. You know, nobody tells me what to do. I, if I want to take a break for a year, I do take a break for a year, and if I want to release something tomorrow, I do that. So. We'll see. Do you see uh, Shining as your own personal vision with all of your influences depending to your current mood? Yeah, it's uh, do I use Shining as as a way of releasing anything I want to make, and it's changing, and it has been changing. We started as an acoustic jazz band, then turned into kind of like a, that was in 2001, their first album which actually comes out, again, a re remastered version 
for the first time on digital platforms next month. Yeah, but uh, that was in 2001, and then we did some more like electro, uh, more like studio uh, prog rock stuff in 2005, 2007, then then Black Jazz in 2010, and then a couple of albums like that, and then Animal, which is a more pop metal thing in 2018. So it changes just because I my life changed. What I'm interested in changes. I want to learn new stuff. I want to learn to sing. I want to learn to write. I want to learn to do stuff. So Shining is the name of all of that. And it's going to be very different all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, 11 years ago, um, you were doing a protest live performance against the demolition of your studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, could you tell us uh, the story? And now in Norway, the things are going better about music freedom? You're talking about the, the the live video out in the street? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was I had a studio and I had spent money may, like building it, but it was in a building that I didn't own. And and I was kind of naive, I guess, to not know that there would be landlords who would sell it and sell it and sell it again and some at one, one time somebody would just decide to make apartments there because they are more making apartments than renting out to artists. So that happened, and I got thrown out after a certain amount of years. And if, if I didn't, then that studio would still be around. It could be 20 more years. It was really well made. Uh, so I was kind of pissed about that. And then um, they de demolished the whole place. So we, had a, we made a video where we played the song I Won't Forget out in the streets recorded just with a microphone on the camera and maybe I had maybe I had a vocal mic on my shirt maybe two two mics something like that yeah you didn't have any microphone or boots on no I didn't have any maybe I had a clip on mic on my shirt I don't know I don't remember and then and then after that we did kind of spark the I wanted to be able to play I wanted to make these live videos where we put up and played kind of advanced hard music but in places which were kind of uncontrollable because I felt a lot of bands were I thought it was too much like sitting in front of the YouTube camera and being like all controlled and I wanted to have the aggression and the the punk attitude from being in a place where stuff is out of control so we did that we did a song a version of uh, the one inside out in the desert between a show in San Francisco and Los Angeles and we stopped the place in the desert had a 16 track mixer with us and recorded the song and I again I mixed it and we put it out and that, that's a really cool version um, and then I don't remember if we did more but we did a, a full concert of uh, the Trolls Tong in Norwegian Trolltunga which is a big big kind of stone ledge hanging out 800 meters above a big fucking drop so uh and it looks amazing and if you fall over you're dead probably before you hit the ground <laughs> and uh so we did that and flew up like it's in the middle of the mountain so we had to fly up drum kit uh and a power generator and monitors and mixing stuff with helicopters two helicopters up there and play the show 40 minutes for audience and the audience had to walk up five hours by foot uh, to get there so um, and uh, there's one song out on YouTube and I have the rest lying in on my hard drive I haven't finished it that was in 2000 that was the same that was this weekend nine years ago okay. we played Hellfest and we played grass pop and then we flew in the middle of the night to Norway drove and slept at a hotel in the middle of the mountain and then went up there and did that show and it's one of the craziest things I've ever I done. I see this video one day. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of another most viewed performance uh, you do, you done on YouTube was the live at Oyo Festival. I discovered your band uh, with the Red Room song at Oyo Festival. Yeah. Could you speak about this performance? This is famous that, is performance? that the one from 2013 or is it older than that? Do you know? Uh, we also played there in 2008. Uh, 2013, I guess. 13, yeah. yeah. 
Um, yeah, the, um, the, uh, the uh, yeah, festival was uh, a great festival and we used to play there a lot. Now we haven't played there since that show. <laughs> it was a great show, but I think like, I don't know why, but we, we, uh, we don't play much in Norway anymore. But it was a great show, great audience, and it was uh, after the album uh, 111, so it was a kind of like a black jazz, black jazz type uh, concert. Are they waiting? They probably have a new guy coming. Do we? Yeah, that's yeah, okay, like yeah. two minutes. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sorry to conclude this interview, but can you tell us uh, your last words for all listeners and Shining fans? Shining fans, thank you for coming to our show. If it's a uh, Hellfest or in the future, come to our show. Um, and thanks for sticking with us through all our crazy ideas. <laughs>